Welcome back to Coding with Kiskit 1. I'm your host, Derek Wong, and this is episode 2, where we'll be installing Kiskit 1.0 and getting ready to access real quantum hardware offered by IBM. With all of these tools set in place, we'll be well on our way to running utility-scale quantum computations in later episodes. So first, let's install Kiskit 1.0, a Python-based SDK. This section is for you if you're totally new to Kiskit, and if you've installed previous versions, you should instead skip to the next section. I'll be focusing on the process for Mac since that's what I happen to have. But if your machine is working Windows or Linux, don't worry. This part is similar when installing any other Python package, and we've linked some of our favorite resources in the description below. First, we want to install Miniconda. This software manages different Python environments, which is helpful when working on different projects where you might want to have a separate Python environment for each. So we'll go over to my laptop and open a browser to start doing this. Let's so open up a new window. And I'm just going to Google Miniconda. Here's a website that I've clicked on before. And first, I just want to talk briefly about whether you should get Anaconda versus Miniconda. They both include the Conda package, which is a commonly used Python environment manager. In this case, I happen to know exactly what packages I want to use. It's Qiskit, and I don't want a large download. So in this case, I'm going to be using Miniconda. So I'll click on the tab for Miniconda here and go into installing it. And what I'll do is scroll to the Mac OS graphical installer since I do have Mac here, and then download the installer. When you go into this page, you'll see that they have different links corresponding to different platforms. There's Windows, there is Linux down here, but I have Mac. So you can see even within the Mac, they have different options. You can install from a bash script, or you can install using this package that corresponds to a nice graphical installer. Um, I'm going to use the package this time. But even among this, you can see you have some choices. You have the Intel chip versus the Apple M1. In my case, to check that, I'm going to go to this button over here in the top left and click on About This Mac. You can see that I have an Intel chip right here, so I'm going to get the Intel package. Just click on that. It'll go to my downloads folder. And let's open it up. So here I'm going to drag it onto the screen. Just click through it. This is a README. Here's the license that you should read quite closely. I'm going to agree to it and install in a specific part of my disk because I just want to localize everything I'm doing for this series in a specific folder just to keep things cleaner. So earlier, I created an account just for this CWQ for Coding with Kiskit, and I made a folder called Coding with Kiskit. So I'll just put it right inside here. Continue, let it do the installation, and just wait a minute or two as this finishes up. Okay, so it's finished installing. I'm going to close out of the graphical installer, move it to the trash. We don't need it anymore. And now what I'm going to do is open a window of my uh, IDE. And this is basically an environment where I can write code, edit it, and then access the terminal. For you, you can either use terminal and a Jupyter Notebook in your Google Chrome, but I just tend to like to use Visual Studio Code. It's free and it's pretty powerful. So the first thing I'm going to do now that I have Conda installed is to create a new environment within Conda. To do that, you need to open a terminal. So I'll just click this terminal button here. And you can see that I have Conda installed because I'm now in my base environment. But what I want to do is create a new environment so that everything I make for this project, for this series, is localized and they don't interfere with other projects I have going on. So to figure out how to do this exactly, again, I'll go back to the Conda documentation and I'm going to figure out how to um, create a new environment. So just Google it, look at the documentation here. And it'll tell me if I want to create an environment, I just do conda creates uh, dash dash name, and then I'll put the name of it here. So I'll just copy this code. Well, actually, I'll just type it out conda create name, and let's call this uh, CWQ for coding with Qiskit, and we'll create the environment. It'll ask if I'm sure I want to do this. Yes, and hit go. Okay. Now that I've created this environment, to activate it, you can see it says right here to just activate with conda activate CWQ. And now you can see in this leftmost part here that I'm in this new environment. 
The first thing I do every time I create a new Conda environment is to install pip. So I'm going to do conda install pip. Pip is basically a Python package manager within this. And so what it'll do is make sure that your uh, Python packages are up to date, that they're compatible with each other, and that you're using uh, stable new versions of Python packages that come out. The reason I install pip first is because I like to install packages with pip within an environment. Again, it just keeps things clean throughout the rest of my Python environments within Conda. So that's been taken care of. I've installed pip. And now what I can do is start to install Qiskit finally. So what I'll do is just type in pip install Qiskit. If you want, you could type in the particular version you want here, for example, 1.0.0. But in this case, I want the latest, most stable version. So I'm just going to do pip install Qiskit and let it install whatever version happens to be uploaded at the moment. As it's doing this, you can see that it's installing other things as well. So it's got Qiskit 1.0.2, but it's also installing NumPy, SciPy, and various other important packages for this. So again, we'll just wait a few seconds for this process to finish up. OK, it's done. And for the purposes of this series, there's a few other packages we'll, we'll need. And so we'll just take care of them right now. And one of them will be matplotlib. This is just a package for plotting things in Python. And it'll be convenient to have this now. It'll help us visualize things like circuits and then create plots of our results. We'll also install uh, Qiskit IBM Runtime. Qiskit is designed to be hardware agnostic. Qiskit IBM Runtime connects Qiskit to IBM's runtime environment so that you can access the 100 qubit plus devices. So I'll just type that as well here. And we'll be using this later in this tutorial. And the final thing that I'll install is this uh, PyLaTeX uh, ENC. And this will just also be part of visualizing things later on. OK, so now this is done. We can make sure that we installed Qiskit correctly in this notebook. So we'll close out of this, and we'll create a new file that is a Jupyter Notebook. And let's save it as um, in this folder I created already. So let's save it inside of Coding with Qiskit. And let's call it Episode 2 Installation. Now it's looking for kernels. This is basically the, uh, the environment it's going to use to run whatever code I put in this Python notebook. In this case, I'm going to look for things, and there we are. There's our environment CWQ. If it doesn't show up because maybe this is the first time you're using Conda, or maybe because this is the first time you're using this particular IDE, the solution that I find works is just to shut it all down and open it up again. Sometimes that helps uh, update things for new installations that you might have added. So I'm just going to click CWQ, and now I've loaded this particular new environment. And let's just make sure that we've installed Qiskit properly by doing import Qiskit. Oh, it requires this ipykernel package. So OK, I'll just install that right now as well. And just wait for a minute for this to finish. And there we go. We installed the package that allows us to run Jupyter Notebooks in this IDE, and then it finished installing Qiskit over here. To make sure that we have the right version, we can do something simple like Qiskit underscore underscore version. And that should print out the version. You can see that we are indeed on a version 1.0 or greater, 1.0.2 in this particular case. Um, so Qiskit as a software is going to be evolving over time. Uh, I send the first video that it should be more stable and more performant. And to follow all this progress, you can go to the GitHub. So let's go to github.com slash Qiskit. And in particular, let's go to this repo right here. And you can see that this is exactly where Qiskit is coming from. This is, uh, it tells you all the information about what it is, the installation, and some basics on creating your first quantum program. We'll do something sort of similar in later videos as well. And not only this, you can see all the code is open. And you can see all the issues being worked out, including feature requests, performance issues, bugs, pull requests that then implement these various things into the code and um, all sorts of other information like the wiki and uh, other performance metrics for Qiskit. So there you go. So we have Qiskit 1.0 installed. You know how to track its progress. And so there are some important caveats to the above if you are an existing user of Qiskit. So feel free to skip this section if you're a totally new user, though. 
First and most importantly, Qiskit 1.0 will involve breaking changes. To install it, and only when going from Qiskit less than 1.0 to a version greater than 1.0, you will have to create an entirely new environment. Secondly, you can test if your current code uses functionality that won't be supported in Qiskit 1.0 by upgrading to Qiskit 0.46, which will emit deprecation warnings for functionality not supported in the latest versions. We strongly recommend you take this step to avoid any surprises when you do eventually upgrade. Now, regardless of whether you are an existing or new user, you should have Qiskit installed on your machine. And before we close out this video, let's also get you access to real quantum hardware so that you can test out quantum algorithms. First, you'll need to go to the IBM Quantum Platform website at quantum.ibm.com. So let me do it in this browser over here, quantum.ibm.com. Here I've already logged in, but if not, you have to create an IBM ID and then you can log in from there. And on this page, you can see all sorts of useful information. You can see, for example, this dashboard that talks about the jobs that you've had, the recent ones you've run on the various devices. There's product updates over here. And as you scroll down, you can learn there's buttons to click on the different compute resources you have to get more documentation, the searcher right here, and then all of the content that's available to teach you how to use these devices. You can dig in a little bit deeper here in the Compute Resources tab, for example, where this is showing the resources I have access to through this particular provider. But if you can look at all the systems in this tab, and you can see that there are uh, 1, 9, uh, 11 devices that have over 100 qubits, as well as a handful that have 27 qubits over here. There's also a tab where you can look at the various jobs that you've run over time and filter through them. So going back to the dashboard, however, what we really want from here is to get our API token. This API token is how the Qiskit runtime service will identify our account with what's being run on our local Jupyter Notebook. So I'm just going to copy it right here. We're going to go back to the Jupyter Notebook, and we are going to now instantiate uh, the Qiskit IBM runtime service, and this will then allow us to access the hardware. So what we'll do is we'll type in Qiskit from Qiskit IBM runtime. This is that package I said to install earlier along with Qiskit. And we're going to import Qiskit runtime service. And here, what we'll do now is instantiate the service with service equals and type in the channel. Here, I'm going to type in the channel IBM Quantum. You have two choices, IBM Quantum or Cloud. Um, I should say that the IBM Cloud is or likely how you'll access the hardware through the open plan, which I'll talk about more in just a second. And then from here, you're going to put in your token. So in this case, my token is what I copied before. I just paste it there. And I'll hit Enter. And you should see that this now instantiates the Qiskit IBM runtime service. OK, there we go. Another thing you can do instead of instantiate it every time with this token here is to save it to your account so that anytime you open up a Jupyter Notebook running on the same uh, environment that it automatically pulls up your details. And to do this, what you'll type is Qiskit runtime service dot save account. And you'll put in the channel here. It's the same as before. And I'm going to put in the token again and just hit enter. And so now it should be saved. And in future videos, you won't see me um, putting in my token again because I've saved the account to this particular environment and I won't need to worry about that again. At this point, we're now going to try to access some hardware. And before I do that, I want to talk a bit more about the hardware that you do have access to. And so if we go back to this page, you can see, again, all of the devices that, in particular, I have access to through the providers that I have. But for anyone else, the question is, what can you access? Well, right now, many of the devices are equals. But in the future, we should be rolling out more herons that, in general, should have substantially better performance with better and faster two qubit gates. And you can check out the recent benchmarking paper linked below for more. To access it for free, there is an open plan. With this open plan, you get 10 minutes of QPU time per month. This is the equivalent of many thousands of shots on quantum computers with over 100 qubits each. And it should be plenty to run all of the examples that I'll be talking about in this series. There's also a premium plan where device access is $1.60 a second. So with your API key, you can now load your account to call quantum computers to execute quantum circuits directly within this Jupyter Notebook. So what we'll do now here is call the backend. So now that we've instantiated this service, I can just type backend equals service.backend. 
and then put in the name of a device. In this case, uh, I want to say call IBM Brisbane here. So I'll type in IBM Brisbane, and it should load that backend. There we go. And now that I have this backend, I could do all sorts of things like check out its various properties here. And in particular, I'm just curious to see how many qubits it has to make sure that we have over 100 qubits. Printing out this number of qubits, we have 127 here. And so in future videos, we'll be using Qiskit 1.0 to access devices you should now also have access to. Try this out on your own. And if you have any issues in the meantime, let us know in the Qiskit Slack or the comments below. And we'll help you figure out issues in advance of our next videos of this series. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.